In this video, I'd like to talk about evaluating radical expressions. So with these example problems, you want to be very familiar with the rules of exponents. So for instance, we have a quotient here and we're using our radical notation for taking roots. So for instance, the fourth root of two, we could also write this as a fractional exponent. Since remember, when writing fractional exponents, the denominator of the exponent is the root that you're taking. So the four will go in the denominator here and whatever power you're raising two to, that is your numerator. So in this case, you're not raising two to anything. So we can assume it's just to the first power. So we can rewrite the fourth root of two as two to the one fourth. And likewise, we can do the same thing with 162. That's just 162 raised to the 1 4th power. So sometimes it's useful to rewrite these with fractional exponents just to remind yourself how to deal with different exponent properties. But if you prefer keeping them as roots, then that works as well, since roots really are just exponents. So one property that we can use here, since we do have a quotient, is that if, let's say we have x raised to the a power and we have y raised to the a power, then we can rewrite this as x divided by y all raised to the a power. So usually we see it starting on the right hand side and then separate that, but sometimes you do see it in reverse. So the general idea is if you have a fraction and it's raised to some exponent that essentially that exponent gets distributed to both the numerator and denominator. But in our case, we're actually working in reverse here. We are starting with our quotient where they're both raised to the same exponent. Since if we rewrote this with our different fractional exponents, we have two to the one fourth divided by 162 to the 1 fourth. So they're different bases, but they're raised to the same power. And essentially starting from here, we can rewrite it like this, where we just have one fraction all raised to that 1 fourth power. So this is equal to two over 162, all raised to the 1 fourth power. Now from here, we can simplify this fraction. Since 2 divided by 162, that's just 1 divided by 81. We can just divide top and bottom by 2. And we have 1 over 81 raised to the 1 fourth power. And from here, we can essentially just apply this rule again, but now going in the other direction. Now starting with our fraction raised to some exponent and effectively distributing that exponent to the top and the bottom. So this is just equal to the fourth root of one divided by the fourth root of 81. Since we would essentially just have one to the one fourth, which is the same thing as the fourth root of one and 81 to the one fourth, which is the fourth root of 81. So the fourth root of one or one raised to any exponent is just one. And the fourth root of 81, that's asking what number multiplied by itself four times would give us 81. And we know that if we take three and we raise it to the fourth power, we get back 81. So this is really just one divided by three. And the nice thing with these problems is that you can check them with calculators. But with the calculator, you might wanna first rewrite it as a fractional exponent since those tend to be easier to input into your calculator. But if you do plug this into a calculator, you will see that it does in fact equal one third. So let's do some more example problems. And again, they're all very similar. They will just apply various different exponent rules. Since notice this one, we have a product. So it's gonna be very similar to the previous problem where if we have, let's say, a raised to the x power multiplied by, let's say, b raised to that same exponent, that we can rewrite this as a times b raised to that x power. 
So just like with a quotient, if you have a product here, if you have multiplication, this exponent will essentially distribute to both of the factors in this product here. So a to the x times b to the x. And we're essentially going to work in reverse. We're starting here and we want to rewrite this as just a product so that hopefully we can make some simplifications. So let's first rewrite these with fractional exponents. So we have minus 54, and since we're taking a third root, we can write this to the one-third power. And this is multiplied by one-half raised to that same one-third power. And since they have different bases but the same exponent, we can rewrite it as a product of minus 54 multiplied by a half and all raised to that same exponent, that one-third power. And the benefit of this is that we can make a simplification here. Since minus 54 multiplied by half, or minus 54 cut in two, would just be negative 27. So we have minus 27 raised to the one-third power, or in other words, we're taking the cubed root of negative 27. And remember with odd power roots, that you can deal with negative numbers. Now, if we had the square root of minus four, this ends up being imaginary. This is twice the imaginary unit or twice the square root of minus one. But when we have odd power roots, like third roots, fifth roots, seventh roots, and so on, the answers will just be real numbers, regardless of whether or not it's positive or negative. So we're asking what number multiplied by itself three times would give us negative 27? Well, if the negative wasn't there, three to the third we know is equal to 27. So you can imagine it has something to do with three. And since we do have that negative, we can try minus three. So to check this, we can take minus three and raise it to the third power. So we're multiplying it three different times. And the reason that these odd roots of negative numbers are equal to real numbers is that when you carry out the multiplication, notice that all of them will pair up except for one. So minus three times minus three, that gives us a positive nine, but then we, we multiply it by this negative three, it goes back to being a negative answer and we do get negative 27. So negative three would be our answer here. And again, I encourage you check this on a calculator by just rewriting this with fractional exponents. And a good piece of advice, if you don't have one of the newest graphing calculators, is to put your exponents in parentheses so that you don't run into any issues with order of operations.